Yeah, it's it's actually. So, I mean, the idea here is just, I was just trying to point out that, you know, if you, if you go back and look at how you do coordinate transformations, then this is where this, I just wanted to point out that the Jacobian comes from, you know, that, that V is a function of the little x's and big V, or VO is a function of the big x's. So you get this uh, Jacobian determinant. Yeah, I think I said that. Uh, I don't know if we proved it, but when we talked about f, that it's sort of a condition on f that it's always positive because uh, because if it's not, if it's negative, it would it would be like the material inverts on itself, and that's sort of not a physical deformation, right? So uh, I was just just mentioned, you know, for for an incompressible material, there's no density change, right? Incompressible materials, the density doesn't change, so rho O over rho would be 1. So the, the condition for an incompressible material is that the determinant of F is equal to 1. And so this can be useful uh, identity and plasticity modeling and other things. Okay? So there's another way that we can write. Mass conservation. It's probably the way you're used to seeing it, especially if you know had course in fluid mechanics, or we certainly use it a lot in petroleum engineering. And so you might call this the differential form, okay? And also, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an identity up here. Uh, does everyone remember for vector calculus, Calc three, uh, like the uh, the divergence theorem? Okay, divergence theorem. Sort of like a generalization of integration by parts. But with the diver divergence theorem, if we have an integral that's over a surface of some vector field with the, with the normal, then we can convert that into a volume integral with this identity, right? So that's the divergence term. So this is divergence operator, okay? So I'm just going to write that because we'll, we'll use that here. All right, so in, in this case, we're going to have a body, and, we're, and dv, dv is going to, well, v, is going to remain fixed, right? It's, it, it's not going to change. And so, you know, in fluid mechanics or thermodynamics, you might call this a control volume, right? So. V is going to remain fixed, and we want to know, uh, you know, the, the basically conservation. We want to write down the conservation of mass for this, right? So, and here, you know, I'm going to use the. You could have some vector field, some normal. This is some ds, and then you, you could also have some flux in and out of this, in and out of the body, right? Potentially. Okay, so the total mass in the body, it, 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 you know, this is sort of in the current configuration like we wrote before. So the total mass is equal to rho dv, right? And just to be explicit, rho is a function of little x, right? So sometimes I like to write down, you know, when we talk about these conservation equations, sometimes I like to say in words what what the conservation equation is, as opposed to just writing equations. I, I sometimes like to say in words. It helps me think about, you know, what this is. So in, in words, 
what conservation of mass in this control volume is, is you know the, the time rate of change of mass has to be equal to the mass that enters minus the mass that exits, right? And you know this we might call the mass flux. Right. So if we look at the time rate of change, so we're gonna we're gonna you know here's our mass. Let's look at the time rate of change of mass. So that's gonna be like d d t rho d v, right? And because I I initially at the very beginning I said that v is fixed, right? V is not changing. So if V's not changing, the only potential thing in this equation that's changing is rho. So we can just move that differential operator inside right there, right? So then you have d rho dt dv, right? So that this is sort of the, the time rate of change of mass. This is the left-hand side of my statement there, right? And that has to equal the mass flux, right? So the mass flux is rho v in ds. And you know, typically we, just as a convention, that because of the way I've drawn it here, the, the mass flux is leaving, right? The v is pointing out, right? So that would be leaving the control volume, exiting, right? So as a convention, we'll put a minus sign there. Okay. Now, this is what I this term here is what I want to use the divergence operator on. I mean, the divergence theorem on, right? So I can, con, you know, it's, this is very straightforward. You just look at look at what I, uh, you know, put up here, and just write it down. Right. So that's minus. The divergence of rho v dv, OK? And so this is actually, uh, you know, again, this is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side now. And so they're both over the same dv. And so for this statement to be, you know, the left-hand side has to equal the right-hand side. For that to be true for any arbitrary dv, then the integrands have to be equal to one another, right? So you have this. And sometimes you'll see it written, well, you know, that's not wrong, but let's write it like this. Just move everything over, set it equal to zero. All right, so this is probably what you're used to seeing, right? Um, we can we can manipulate this a little more to to put it in a slightly different form. Um, so I want to write out the components of this divergence op operation. So if, if we write out. So then that's just an in initial notation. And so then I'm, I'm going to, the second term, I'm going to apply the chain rule. So I'll, re I'll rewrite the first term. And with the second term, I'm going to apply a chain rule. And 
And what you might notice with that is that this thing is the definition of the material time derivative of rho. Right? So we should be on the previous page in, in your notes. And so this is another way to write this. So we have this and this. All right. 